on guys welcome back to the channel you know who it is by now so ladies and gents we are back taking a little bit of a more in-depth look at goatee now goatee is interesting it got a couple of new cards in the most recent set i believe uh, or the last set i can't remember which one it was but the cards are actually really really good for the strategy um i believe it's keith and seeks can't remember their full names, but yeah, I just remember them. Key for seats. But um, the cards do actually push the deck into the realm of a little, at least a little bit more consistent and a little bit more playable. Um, it's got more of an identity now, um, well, as it ever has, to be honest. But I still feel like the deck's missing something. Now, I managed to take this deck to locals, and I was actually going to do a locals vlog on this deck, but. There was a few issues that I found with the deck, particularly my build, and I feel like my build definitely will need to change because there was a few issues that I found that kind of frustrated me and got me thinking as to whether or not I could build it differently, as well as some of the, the, the text in the extra deck, which there is a little bit of space to put a few more cards in there, to be honest. Um, so with that in mind ladies and gents what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna give you guys a deck profile and then i'm gonna talk about kind of like what i found about the deck um what could be potentially used to improve the deck going forward and just where the deck stands in terms of the meta right now um which is kind of obvious to see because fire is literally everywhere but nonetheless ladies and gents let's just get straight into the deck profile Okay ladies and gents, so here is the list and it's fair to say that I'm not entirely settled on the list as it were. I feel like there's a few things that I could definitely change and that I will probably change in the future when I pick this deck back up again. And I will pick it up again, but for now I'm just going to let it rest. Um, so starting us off, um, one of the most de distant deepest depths. This card's amazing. Um, I wish I'd have went for three of this. It actually allows you to play. Um, it searches out your combo pieces, gets your stuff banished initially. And this was the mainstay of the initial rendition of um, Goatee. And I just decided to go with one um, just because of squeezing another engine. But I regret not playing more of this card because it does actually facilitate some plays. Um, for the rest of the Goatee engine, to start off with the tuners, um, we've got two shift, uh, two paces as well as the one Zep. Um, I think this was pretty solid. You don't really want to see Zep. You just want to search it when you want to kind of like um, go off on your opponent's turn. But these two are pretty solid. I, I, I was maxing out on, I believe it was uh, Paces at one stage, but it, it tended to just brick my hand. Sometimes you see multiples and you can only resolve one of them once per turn. And I, feel, I felt like two was enough, but there were times when I didn't see them enough and that's where the field spell would have came into play. Um, being able to kind of like just like get these out of the deck basically or just get them banished um, but yeah the tuners were pretty they were okay to be honest I can't I can't really complain um, for the rest of the goalty stuff we played one Keith uh, one Exceep still one um, Seeks uh, and one uh, uh, Snowpios now these were pretty solid um, these two cards are crazy like you can be tempted to play more of these, um, but you don't need to, <laughs> in all honesty. You don't need to play any more than what you're already playing. However, Keith is just a powerhouse, especially once your engine's rolling. You don't want to see him, um, you don't really want to see him until you've got your engine rolling, basically. And he's, he's normally the search on your turn two or three, potentially. Um, Exceeps just an extender. You could actually change this for, is it Minikuri or Minikurai? Um, the level four monster, it literally jumps out your hand. We're not actually playing the trap, so it doesn't really benefit in us, benefit in any in any other way other than just being an extender. So you could actually take that out for something that's a little bit easier to um, activate. Um, Seeks is just busted. Like Seeks is your main play now. Um, off Ariane Post, like literally, you just go for Seeks every single time, um, just because you can kind of like tutor out where you want to take your deck, whether you want to um, hyper extend or whether you just want to go into a, a more safer line. Uh, and then Snowpio, Snowpio is really nice. It allows you to play either turn one, it can get stuff banished very, very quickly, which is good, uh, and it can recur itself. So very, very strong cards indeed. And uh, this is probably the reason why I like playing the deck so much, just because of those four. Um, following on, we have Triple Lifeless Leafish. This is a little bit frustrating. I didn't see this card as much as I wanted to. Um, and it is a bit of a magnet for a hand trap. Ash, Imperm, Vela. Uh, just yeah, it just literally just attacks this card. Your opponent probably will, would be wise not to do this, um, but you kind of need to 
yeah, you need to kind of like see this card and be able to resolve its effects basically. But yeah, Leaflish is solid. Um, the draw is nice as well. You can put back a few resources, especially extra deck monsters. Um, and then we were playing the Double Abyss Shark. I do have a third somewhere, but I could not find it, ladies and gents. So I went with the two. Um, and one thing I will say about this, when we get to the extra deck, I regret not running the level 7, seven um, uh, White Aura Fish Masana roll, so something like along those lines, I'll put an image on the screen for you guys. But it just meant that sometimes this was stuck on board and you didn't have a 7 fish to go into because it's just kind of just there. Uh, it does help with making um, some rank 4 plays, however, it was a little bit frustrating at times, it just sat on your field basically, so yeah, it is what it is. For the rest of the engine, I actually played the white um, reincarnation engine, and I'm gonna li not gonna lie, ladies and gents, this was a little bit of a mistake to be honest. This engine inherently is bricky because it's effectively a two card combo. Um, you need to be able to see this card in combination with your double white sunfish, um, which is not always easy to do, and especially as you have to play three of the white sardine. It's a little bit frustrating because you need the white reincarnation with the sunfish to be able to uh, uh, enable the whole combo and sometimes you see one not the other sometimes you don't see the other there are times where you can search it or tutor it out of your deck but it's just not worth it to be honest and they, these are like i don't know eight cards that could have been like extenders more goalty cards for example the field spell for example it could have been all of that um, and i do regret putting these in because i just felt like it didn't do enough for the deck it did get bodies on board and you can make them into tuners if you can get them back out of the graveyard, but it takes a lot to facilitate that and set it up. And I found like, they were just kind of like sitting in my hand that time. And that's one of the things that I would potentially change um, uh, when I play this deck again in the future. And then continuing on just with the hand traps, ladies and gents, played one nib, um, double goal spell, excuse the mixed rarities. I literally just grabbed whatever, <laughs> whatever rarity of hand trap I had just because I wanted to play the deck when I took it uh, to locals. Um, one Ghost Mourner as well as the Triple Ash Blossom and the Triple Infinite Impermanence. Um, yeah, uh, hand traps were okay. Sometimes I bricked on them a couple of times. In fact, I bricked on them really hard and this deck doesn't inherently have too many one card combos. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. There's only 10 hand traps in a deck. Obviously, I'm playing a 40 card deck, um, so you do see hand traps quite frequently, but it was a little bit frustrating at times and I've just seen only hand traps. Um, and again, that's part part and parcel of having a white engine in here. It just kind of like messed things up a little bit with regards to what I was seeing. And then just to finish out the main deck, ladies and gents, play double talents. Uh, the one ready fusion. Again, I regret not playing two of this and potentially putting in the Alvain in the extra deck just because I could get another uh, level two tuner body on field and just go straight into Ariane Pulse on my own turn. Um, that was a little bit of oversight from me. And again, that's that's what comes with testing, but potentially two of these could have been really, really good. But yeah, I did like Ready Fusion to be honest. Um, as well as Core by the, um, sorry, Core by the Grave, <laughs> Cross Out Designator. Now this is an interesting card. It does actually start your engine, believe it or not. It's not just here to stop hand traps, which it can do. Um, but I tended to just hold this right until the end phase and then you can put it, yeah, you can banish one of your um, tuna monsters in the form of like Paces or even Chiff. Um, and at times, if you've got your engine rolling, you can actually ban Keith as well. Um, so this was actually a nice card and it's probably one of the decks that takes advantage of cross out designator's effect because it can just kind of like net you advantage um, as, as in comparison to just being like a defensive card. So I did like cross out designator. I potentially would have put the third one in uh, and just to round us out, the Gold Sarg and the Cord by the Grave. You need Cord by the Grave. It's a rogue deck. You kind of need to stop your your opponent from stopping you, basically. So, yeah, it is what it is. Then onto the extra deck, ladies and gents. So, starting us off with the Goldy stuff, we played two um, Ariampos. I was messing around with three at one stage, but I realized two is probably um, the most optimal just because once you've resolved this once, you don't really need to keep facilitating this combo. And if your board does get cracked, you've just got one more to kind of like build your board again. But nine times out of 10, if you've got this resolved, you've got a load of resources that can kind of like just keep looping themselves. So you don't really need more than two, but um, if you wanted to play two, that's entirely up to you. Um, double Askan, again, this is probably a two of. Um, it's unsummoned banish effect is, is actually really, really nice. And then once you've got this set up in the graveyard, you can just banish it and it just starts recurring itself, becomes a body um, and it becomes some fodder for this card 
<laughs> now there is an argument to play to this a double board wipe ladies and gents is just like that is rough for your opponent i'm not even gonna lie like it's really really strong and what the interesting fact about this is is the fact that it just comes back on your opponent's turn it's just huge <laughs> it's just literally huge uh, and if you've got this in combination with seeks it's almost like an otk just because seeks can like bring himself back after he's been banished by um deep beyond's effect and you've board wiped your opponent and then you got seeks on field as, as well as a search so very 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 strong uh, i didn't really like it so yeah this is why i like playing it that this card resolving this just it's a mad adrenaline rush man it's, it's crazy um, also going on, we played the White Aura Porpoise. This is actually pretty good. Uh, I like this. When the Fish Engine or the White Aura Engine got rolling, um, it was really good. This card is nice. Um, you do tend to make this on your turn two or three. Um, it's not your starting play, just because of the nature of how I built this deck. But I, like, I do like this card, and I probably would include it without necessarily including the... Um, uh, some of the, the the main deck monsters, but yeah, I did like white aura porpoise. Uh, one dragite just for the obvious negate. Uh, one white aura whale. This is actually nice with white reincarnation, but I feel like it takes too much setup. Um, it's it it. What I do like about it is it's non months per turn to just bring itself back out of the um, graveyard and just banish one of your materials. Um, engrave, which obviously allows you to kind of like put all your goatee monsters back in the banish zone to just be be um, activated again on the following turn so i did like that in a sense um, especially with keith as well um, because obviously you got white or a whale and then you can just use keith to make a 10 so yeah it worked out sometimes next uh this is a little bit of a contentious one so um baron the fleur as well as chenging chenging is just obvious it's a water monster you can make it it gets really big in this deck um, and you can you can kind of on-demand trigger its effect to banish a card on field and grave So really really strong card in this deck I was messing around with fish lamp and baron de fleur because I was trying to look for my copy I was like in and out of the deck, but fish lamp in this deck ladies and gents is not good I'm not even gonna lie You can't always make it so it's just like a wasted extra deck slot and it doesn't really do much for your board Like if you go into this it doesn't really do much yet you can pop a card, but you already need to be ahead in the game. So I felt I felt like this was a little bit of an oversight, but I just wanted to test it because obviously it's got a token generation effect when it gets used as synchro material. Um, it's a level four tuner. Um, and so there's, there's things that you can pair with it. You can go straight into Askan, it's a fish monster, but it's a fire. <laughs> like it just, if you use any of the white sunfish stuff, you can't use this. And this is the whole point of having a white sunfish stuff because once you um, revive the white, sardine out of the graveyard it becomes a tuner and it's quite easy to get a level two on board but it's a fire like just <laughs> it just blows my mind you get locked into water so quickly in this deck um so yeah it was a bit of an oversight from me but i tested it nonetheless just so you guys didn't have to so i'd definitely take that out just leave the baron in ladies and gents it's just yeah it's a no-brainer no-brainer uh, and then finally, uh, one rare fish. Uh, we should have put Alvain in as well as the secondary target. Um, one Abyss uh, Stealth Kragan. This is interesting. It had an interesting matchup. I played against uh, Magic Spectre, and this kind of floodgates their deck. <laughs> so it kind of stops them from using their spells and traps because they all become water spellcasters, not wind spellcasters. So this is a bit of an interesting tech. But um, yeah, it, they can't really show the card effects anyway. So. It didn't really do much in that sense, but very, very solid card. Uh, Abyss Keeper solid. This actually out helped me out at Beguska um, because it can summon from hand and then just banish one card your opponent controls and one fish monster this card points to. So Beguska was actually outed by this and it allowed me to play as well as putting one of my goalty monsters in a banish um, zone. And then finally, one Marincess Coral Anemone. You can revive any of your white sunfish stuff to make them tuners, which is nice. But like I said, you already need to be ahead in the game. You already need to be up an advantage. Um, or if, you, if you, you're trying to facilitate a play on a clap back. So yeah, interesting. But that's the list, ladies and gents. I'm not going to go for the side deck because the side deck was just literally all over the place. But what I will say is I definitely would not include the white aura stuff. I definitely try and go for more pure build. And you could actually slide a couple more hand traps in if you was going to do that. Because you're going to have the field spell to um, make sure you ensure maximum consistency. Um, and then the hand traps just to allow you to be a little bit more defensive. Because 
there's one thing with this deck which i'll talk about um later on in the video is the fact that a lot of the players are telegraphed um so yeah so it's an interesting one but nonetheless that's the list ladies and gents um yeah um on to the next one Five months. Stand by, man. Uh, normal summon effects. He said one fish monster from my deck to the graveyard. Banish one fish monster from my uh, hand or grave and then add one multi monster from deck. Yeah. 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 Effects, because he was banished. Okay. Turn on Buster Wild. Banish one fish master from hand. Graveyard, special summon, so banish a piece of special summon. Uh, special resolution effect to banish this free stun. So it adds one and then banishes one. Jeez! If you catch two, I will not play this in the next one. Is that one per turn? On some and a Activate to go to end phase. End phase and it's Calling Keith. Secondary uh, effect? No, it's not. Standby phase? Same. 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 Special summon and prayer. Yeah, Pass. Still in main. Um, yeah. You want stay Quick synchro. Mm -hmm. Things are New chain, Zep effects. Activate the structure for the Zep effect on Summer. Uh, uh, Is your main phase? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> effect synchro. Yeah. Chainlink 1, target, Chainlink 2, Ariampo, Spanish, yeah. Spanish. Yeah, yeah, Spanish. Judge, I need cheating, man. Say a band called. On the panel, Swimming Crash Terra does piercing yeah. damage and this is 38. So 38. Oh, oh. Uh, Banishing Ariampo. 
Yeah. 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 Um, um, so the blade, it goes six, to an effect when banished, it can banish a fish monster that's special so How did you summon this again? I summoned that. Shocks are so numerous. And this is why this card is fast. Yeah, nothing to tell you. Oh, look, you got a top one. Maybe it's two. What did she do, man? I know we got this. Uh, mm -hmm. Fast. Wait, we have some of this. Curious. I'm not on Sunday, man. I hate it. Oh, you're going to go insane. Yeah. No, 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 no. The expensive one. Okay, on Sunday, you're going to go insane. Think of it. Uh, on summon, although Keith target as uh, banishes it, and then I target one of my own fish monsters, level six or lower, that's banished, and special summon it, and then banish Keith. Search is fine. Yeah, search is fine. Yeah, search is fine. You are the highest score, so you yep. automatically won. Yeah, yeah, by 500 times the number of banished monsters, so 
there's three here. Three and then there's two here. Three and two, so that's five, so twenty-five. Um, and then we will circle. Hmm? They go back. Oh yeah, fine. Oh, hello. Guy, and then we'll go uh, six effects. This is bad. Banish Zep to summon himself. Yeah. <laughs> What was your last one? The secret. Magic So hopefully ladies and gents you've seen what the deck can do going first, um, it is a lot of fun to play, there's a lot of moving pieces, um, there's a lot of things to think about in terms of when you choose to interact, your lines are kind of, I wouldn't say linear but they're, they're, they're kind of like chained, kind of like how Fluanda Rees works where you need to resolve all of it in sequence and there's no room for like wiggle room so you can't kind of like hold um, a synchro summon at times and you can't always time your Ascan at the right time um, just because of the nature of how the deck works especially when you're using Zep on your opponent's turn you're forced to use it to synchro summon immediately as soon as it hits the field so that inherently is a bit of a problem um, but in saying that it does actually play around what is currently in the meta at the moment because currently um, cards don't really want to be banished uh, especially with all the fire decks that literally kind of like just play out the graveyard which is effectively like a second hand and we always kind of like say that in Yu-Gi-Oh but the deck plays out the graveyard so when you've got things like deep beyond you've got Askan that are just banishing cards left right and center and this deck can actually play shifter uh, it's not the best shifter deck um, by a long shot which is another thing actually but we'll come to that in a moment but um, it does play well into the meta just because it banishes a whole load of cards uh, and it can do quite a lot in your opponent's turn as well as pop cards which is a little bit interesting because if you do facilitate any kind of like uh synchro eight play into your white aura whale for example that could just nuke a board like <laughs> if they've got no monsters in attack positions which probably they most likely will be because they're going second it would just nuke their board and it's just literally unfair and especially with the way that like um the fire king stuff works with the high avatar garunix and the kirin they're just popping cards so you can just keep bringing back the white oral well and keep banishing those resources out of your graveyard to just net advantage on your following turn if you should survive that is um with the zilantis otk it's a bit of a problem but with the way that um white or a whale works you can actually just kind of like keep bringing it back and just keep putting it in defense position to block damage so it is a useful card in that aspect so there are a few things that you can do however there are a few issues with the deck uh, like i was saying the most glaring thing for me is going first um, you can kind of see what is going to happen like all your cards are like laid out on the table in front of your opponent your opponent can effectively kind of put you down a cul-de-sac and just make you activate one of their effects uh, one of your monsters effects basically to synchro summon and once you do that you're in a bit of a predicament they're gonna you're probably gonna banish a card that you don't really want to get rid of or you're gonna play straight into a trap that's been set by your opponent whether that be like i don't know playing into sp little knight for example or playing into um some kind of like strategy that will like benefit your opponent which i find a little bit frustrating just because your opponent could just pick the card up read it know that it's going to be a quick synchro they could force the battle phase for example and run over one of them or just kind of like threaten going into a battle phase which then effectively means you have to chain it and you won't get the most value out of it you can't always resolve deep beyond imperm is a problem like if they get imperm right off the rip it's a problem they're already face up on the field your opponent could potentially be starting with uh, no cards in hand or no cards on field basically and just start with the imperm uh, uh, in the draw phase uh, or the standby phase for example which is a little bit frustrating just because it effectively just turns off one of your monsters and your whole play is to synchro summon in your opponent's turn which is a bit of a problem i have seen a few lists that run hoppier squadron to be able to do this from hand which is a little less susceptible to like imperm and all that kind of stuff but 
it still kind of plays into the whole notion of being able to stop their plays before they get started. Um, some of the Link Monsters aren't the strongest as well. Like I had an issue with Baguska. I did manage to out it with the Abyss, uh, the Abyss Shark, but um, SP Little Knight is a problem, um, and it's it's really difficult to play some duels without having an effective link three to go into you do get water locked and sometimes fish locked um in some instances pretty early on so it's difficult to then kind of like pivot into another line of flare just because of the, the 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 resource pool of monsters is not that big for like fish or or decent water monsters to be honest um you could try and take in some mermel but i don't know i don't know if that's going to make your deck any any more consistent so to speak probably even make it a little less consistent but there are a few benefits to the deck like i said it does put up some big beaters the crack back on your following turn after you've gone first so like turn three is just crazy you've got so many resources um but then the disadvantage is that your engine doesn't really like have a lot of removal um and it's very very easily outed if your opponent removes bodies on field it's difficult to play like i was playing against the ai i was playing against sword soul and the AI just flipped black out and I was just like stunned out of the game. I was just like, I can't believe this is happening. I'm playing against the AI and they're stunning me with one card basically. Um, and that's just my whole play down the drain basically. So I found that a little bit frustrating. If you remove the bodies, a little bit like how Sprite operates. If you start removing their bodies off the field, they can't really do much. So it struggles going second. And with the plays that are just so telegraphed, it's so easy to kind of like just get rid of monsters and with sp little knight being a card they could just chain sp little knight to one of your tuners or just banish the tuner and then you're just stuck with a level four monster on field which is basically like a vanilla monster so it does have its inherent weaknesses but the deck is a lot of fun and i do think if it was built differently it might actually do a little bit more there's a lot of cards out there that could facilitate the way that this deck wants to play which is basically synchro summoning on your opponent's turn you do get locked into fish when you use the uh, tuner's effects, which is something that you need to bear in mind. And again, I'll mention it again, the pool of fish monsters aren't the best. But, but all in all, I feel like the, the support has definitely done something in a way of making the deck a little bit more powerful. Um, Seeks is just like a wonderful addition to the deck. As long as, uh, along with Keith, Keith is like, his, his nickname is SP Little Fish, just because of the interaction it has with special summon monsters. It's just crazy. It just removes them off the field and you just net your advantage. Um, again, it is telegraphed, so your opponent can kind of play around it somewhat by going into SP Little Knight, which, which is one of the ways. But it's easier said than done depending on the hand that they've got and if you're acute if you're very cute with the way that you play your deck you can actually um just kind of like play around um what your opponent's trying to force you to do um it doesn't leave a lot of room for non-engine and yeah if your engine doesn't survive you, you can actually just die and um, because you've got no inherent way of banishing cards unless you search for um snow peels in your turn one combo which is which can be done uh, but in saying that it's it's not always the way it's not always possible it's not always facilitated and you can burn through a lot of engine or a lot of cards in your hand just trying to get your, your play set up which is a another problem that i found especially with decks having almost infinite recursion at the moment just because of the way that decks are built and just like Yu -Gi -Oh is just crazy at the moment but all in all ladies and gents that's just my thoughts on goatee hope you like this different style of video and like i said if there's any questions or if you've got any ideas on how you would improve the deck definitely get at me in that comment section below like i always mention in my videos i'm always open to um honest open opinions and just like new tech ideas and just bouncing ideas off people just to improve my overall gameplay and my deck building basically um so yeah let definitely get at me in the comment section below and we find ourselves at the end of another video as always if you did enjoy this content you know what to do by now ladies and gents hit that like button share subscribe all of that beautiful good stuff and i will definitely definitely see you guys on the next video hope you enjoyed peace